Good afternoon, friends, family, loved ones. Welcome to the Wednesday Let's Play Threat Gen Red vs. Blue stream here on the Threat Gen and Simply Cyber channels. If you're coming to us on either of those platforms, hello and thank you for spending your Wednesday late morning with us. Seeing Carrie in here, Aaron KG, what's going on? So guys, you know, it is US Thanksgiving tomorrow. It's a good time to take pause and give thanks. And today we wanna give thanks to one of the more advanced techniques in the Threat Gen Red versus Blue cybersecurity simulation platform, which allows you to play as the red team or the blue team in kind of like a cyber chess game and, and really learn and execute in the mission. Today, we are getting a treat. It's Greg's Wild Ride. You may have heard this phrase in the past on prior streams. One of the Threat Gen uh, beta testers and QA analyst, Greg Pekarski, uh, he made his bones, if you will, in Threat Gen Red versus Blue by just attacking in an unbelievable fashion from the red side into the blue, eviscerating blue teams left and right. There's no amount of AI that could slow him down. And the technique that he uses is been dubbed Greg's Wild Ride. Now, it can manifest in a few different ways. And Greg is going to give us a bit of a sprinkling today. He will be piloting the platform. I will be narrating, handling um, chat and such. Uh, but he'll be blasting, you know, from the internet all the way through. It, that's why it's the wild ride. That's why it's a train on the thumbnail. He gets on, oot, oot, and he just boogies right on through the network. You can't stop him. You can't slow him down. We're going to have a banger of a stream. If he kicks its butt right out the gate, we'll get Greg's Wild Ride 2, a second technique that he uses. You'll be able to learn in this next hour a, how to be more effective at the cybersecurity threat gen red versus blue um, actual game and the game mechanics itself, but we'll also be studying how red team threat actors can operate from anywhere in the world and take down critical business and operational assets. And that's what Greg's gonna do for us. So I'm super pumped. Stay with us. I see people queuing up in chat, 24 folks already, I see you. Poner Joe, my man, left coast getting in here. It's been a minute since I seen you, Poner Joe. Hey, Ben. Hey, Lane. Good to see you. BSEC, what's up with you? Lewis Trout coming in on LinkedIn. And John Patin also on the LinkedIn. Tom Bishop, how you doing, guys? We got a great stream. Stick with us. We'll see you in a second. All right, here we are, Greg. So we, what you could see here is I am on the right and Greg is right beneath me. Uh, Greg has opted for the avatar look and that's his sc screen. Greg, how are you today? I'm doing fine, thanks. Today how long? Be... Yeah, if go ahead, man. Be... Continue, please continue. I was, no, no, please tell me what you want to say. What's going on, Greg? I just wanted to like introduce that we will be introducing the Greg's Wild Ride, like, strategy. I wouldn't say it's specifically like a concrete strategy. It's more of a set of variations of certain strategies. But uh, yeah, feel free to like continue. Joe. No, absolutely. So Greg, let me ask you before we dig in here so people can get to know Greg a little bit. How long have you been playing Threat Gen Red versus Blue, Greg? Oh, about like hmm, two years and a half, to be honest. Like, Two and a half years. All right. And how many games do you think you've logged, Greg? Probably a few thousand at least. A few really. thousand people. So this is definitely rooted in experience. Now, how long have you been doing Greg's Wild Ride? Um, well, if, um, I think like originally I've developed a strategy about a year ago or at least started using it. Pretty much about since about we've introduced uh, password attacks because the strategy is centered around password attacks insofar that they are easier to perform 
and they are easier to uh, execute than standard attacks because of many other because of many uh, aspects that will be introduced in the industry. All right, that sounds good. And, and final question, because I'm curious, I'm sure chat's curious. The term Gre Greg's Wild Ride, where did that originate from? It originated from our, dis from our Discord server. I believe uh, initially I called the strategy a uh, script kitty strategy because uh, it's uh, well, password attacks are just an easy tool of entry and uh, they are generally not, not that sophisticated. But uh, I believe uh, Alex Goodwin initially started calling it like Greg's Wild Ride, and that name stuck with the community. So that's why we call it what we call it today. All right. Well, uh, I absolutely love it. And to Greg's point, if you haven't joined the ThreatGen Discord server, definitely check that out. Um, you can you know, message me, DM me. I will drop links. Um, there is this link right here, but you know, obviously, um, you can take a screenshot, drop that into a web browser, and you will join the Discord server. A lot of great activity going on in there, and both Greg and I are active in that community. So, Greg, without further ado, why don't we drop in and start start the engines, if you will, Greg, and take us on a wild ride. Okay, so we'll start with a single-player game. We'll be playing as that team. And what kind of map do you want to play on, Jerry? Um, I, you know, I like, let's go large oil and gas company. Go for the big map. Okay, here we go. <sighs> so first of all, we'll start off by uh, OSINT. Yeah, it's pretty much basic to like introduce, open up more, more of the red team actions. We'll research. Uh, I think we'll go for default credentials. This strategy mainly mainly uh, is centered around using uh, the password attacks, which are mm -hmm. easy to execute, don't take as much resources, and therefore are more effective. You don't you also don't need to find vulnerabilities to be able to exploit them. You just log in into a screen and you own the box or whatever else, right? Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. And it, and it actually introduces a, an interesting argument in the cybersecurity community. Chat, love for you guys to weigh in. Does exploiting a default password count as hacking? Does exploiting weak passwords count as hacking? Be curious on everybody's thoughts. It's kind of it's kind of a hot debatable topic, but I agree with you, Greg, uh, especially from the mechanics of the game. Um, you don't have to do the research for vulnerabilities. You don't have to roll the dice on maybe exploiting or not exploiting, um, you know, with, with the weak passwords. Plus, guys, as we all know, it's very easy to Google default uh, vendor credentials on devices and give them a shot, right? Especially internet-facing devices. Archon's weighing in. Yes, absolutely. Just Ben saying, yep. Hey, if you're getting on a box and you're not authorized to be there, you're hacking it. You're getting in there. Okay. So I love and it. What else are you going to do? Uh, what else are you going to do, Greg? Uh, this is a bit of, con of a controversial move to like use it that early, but I believe it gives you a lot more tempo to like be able to move quickly. And uh, right now, even if we waste those resources, uh, like we don't gain the, the additional resources because of this action, uh, it's fine. It's a loss I'm willing to expect, uh, accept. Yeah, interesting. So, uh, you know, for those who are not familiar with the game, recruiting the hackers does give you start off with five resources. Recruiting hackers will give you two additional resources if it's successful. And there is some discussion around, you know, do you have cred yet? Like, have you gotten arrested? Have you broken into things? Have you done anything like sweet heat elite hacksaw? So go ahead. Give it a shot, Greg. Let's roll the dice here. Okay. Okay, so we've got the default credentials research. We'll just go to research the weak passwords then, right? We, okay, so we yeah, have... really leaning into that. Really leaning into that. Yeah, really, because it's we need to research it before we are able to exploit it, to be mm -hmm. able to exploit it efficiently, right? We want to minimize the amount of tries it will take to compromise a machine. Yep, I like it. I like it, Greg. Okay, moving on. All right. 
Alex Goodwin saying that recruiting uh, this early is a long shot, but comparatively cheap during ramp up. Okay, we have the passwords, we have research OSINT, uh, we have the elite password cracker achievement, yay, because we have research to both big passwords and default credentials. Nicely done, Greg. Greg unlocking stuff here, people. And yeah, we'll be doing a host scan from the internet. This uh, like this is the first point of like um, where the variations like start to be introduced because you can go in, which is by compromising firewalls and then moving on through the all the other zones. But you could as well like start researching phishing and hopefully get a box uh, like that's deeper in with, with, within the network to move faster. Uh, you could also go on site and gain a initial like access there you could there's a lot of ways of gaining initial access but generally as as we need to go as deep as we can so mm -hmm, i'll mm -hmm. do the most basic strategy but you can like try to use all the other strategies within your games right okay all right uh, and you so what what, what are you going to do i mean are we going the og greg's wild ride yeah og greg's wild ride so basically you're compromising all the firewalls in order if we will be able to we can like uh, there will be some potential like uh, setbacks that there can be but we, i will discuss this later if they will come up in the game sure i like uh, it i like it quick passwords under the level of that okay and now we can end the turn all right Okay, we've got the first host scan completed. Uh, we pass. Uh, okay, that was the old one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I uh, see. So the yep. first host scan was completed, and now we see a bunch of devices. Now, uh, can you check the action log? Did something oh, fail? Uh, okay, continue. Feel free to say whatever you want to say. Yeah. I so it looks like so you know because this is a game and it is you know mimicking reality. There are a chance that things you do, moves you make, aren't successful. And in this case, Greg's attempt to recruit hackers that took three turns and locked up two resources ended up failing. So Greg uh, kind of uh, spent those resources without any return on value, a return on his investment. Excuse me. Okay, so I port scan all the devices to be able to like find out what they are, right? Yep. Okay, so the first port, port scan is completed, so now we can at least see the types of the devices. Uh, the two devices are good like initial point because it can be a router, it can be a firewall, it can be uh, something that has default credentials vulnerabilities, right? Because in default, like normal Windows machines or whatever else, you won't really have a default password. The, the account creation process will most likely prompt you for some password, right? There isn't mm -hmm. a really default of any kind. I like it. Yeah, good point. Now, Greg, uh, uh, there's a question in chat too from Lane. Uh, what's the fastest, what's the speed run for Greg's Wild Ride? Have we have we attempted that in the past? A timed... Um, uh, I think it uh, the, the probably like the the, the easiest the, the shortest strategy could be like twenty turns and maybe about five minutes if you like really input the moves quickly and click and turn quickly and do yeah. the moving quickly. But I like it. Also setbacks that can like slightly extend the game, but uh, uh, yeah, it's not really uh, doesn't really create the fastest way, right? It no, that's good. It's good. It, yeah, if we have time, if we have time on stream later, Greg, maybe we, uh, maybe we invest five minutes and try to do a speed run. Like no talking. Uh, I'll do all the talking. You just speed run. But uh, let's continue on with Greg's wild ride in the traditional sense. Okay, I'll, I'll enumerate all the other devices so we can like be able to uh, password attack them if we need. Yep. Now, are you going to continue doing weak password research to increase your chances, or do you find that just the one? Oh, you are continuing uh, to do. It. I'm sorry. I will get a weak password level because I believe like two levels is sort of low, but uh, will uh, try to password attack the uh, firewall as well, right? So that we may be able to control it. Hello? Hello, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. 
Okay. Let's see. Nice, Greg. First step. Okay. Hold on. Can I get a um? There we go. Uh, can you hear that? Yeah, you should be able to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah. That, yeah. So Greg, Greg's getting the full soundboard um, uh, treatment today. It, it, the soundboard's definitely favorable for a pen, a red team moves here. So uh, please, uh, what have we done here? Okay, so we will continue by compromising the server router. Why do we want to compromise the server router? It's not a firewall and won't able to won't enable us to move laterally, right? Uh, because the server mm -hmm. router, if the network is segmented, it will contain all the uh, routing tables, which will enable us to see all the firewalls in the uh, network configuration, right? So that may, that way we won't have to host scan, then port scan, then uh, enumerate the firewalls. We'll just know where the firewalls are right away and we'll be able to quickly move to the uh, important assets. Nice. Yeah, I love it. Smart move, smart move, uh, grabbing those routing tables off of the, the switch. Very, I mean, off the router. Very cool. Router. Yes, this is the router. Uh, okay, and I will recruit hackers another time. Maybe we'll get lucky. Who knows, right? Yeah. Hey, I got to set, I got to, I got to my hand on the stream deck as we speak. Let's, let's, let's uh, wish you luck here. Okay, we have gained the pivot, so we now know all the firewalls in the configuration, but I presume the network isn't really segmented yet. So the, we only know of the one firewall we have compromised. So that's not really much of an improvement, but it is always something, right? Right, I like it. We'll call them from the firewall then, right, to reveal all the assets in the network. Yeah, so now what can you do from the router that you just compromised, Greg? Uh, from the router will give me the the bonus. That's pretty much it. I can't really do anything from there. I could co cover tracks, but only if I had persistence. And we don't care about the persistence because we'll be moving so quickly. They won't be able to catch us. Hopefully. Okay. So two things here. One, are you you so you don't want to host scan from the router right now because you want to wait uh, until the, the... Uh, there will be no difference whether whether I scan from the main firewall or whether I scan from the server router because okay. they are both in the same subnet. So that doesn't really matter which which one I will host come from. I host see. Okay. Be a waste of resources, right? Very good. Yes. And another uh, another key element here, in case you guys missed it, Greg does not establish persistence or move quietly. Greg's wild ride is in fact a bumpy, noisy one, and Greg is just moving like a thief in the dark, trying to, um, you know, actually it's, it's almost like Hunger Games when they first come up onto the land and the bell goes off and like you're running for the, the little pile of resources in the middle. That's what Greg's doing right now. He's not trying to like, you know, sweep, sweep the sand behind him to cover his footprints. He's full blast, uh, full tilt sprinting. So go for it, Greg. Okay. We'll research the past weak passwords as well, because that will be another level and that will help us, uh, be more efficient. <laughs> I okay. love it. People, people in chat are talking about a red versus blue holiday edition. I love it. Holy crap. So look at all these assets you've discovered, my friend. Yeah. The network isn't segmented, so they are all in the same subnet, and therefore I can see them. Uh, mm. I will just try to port scan. Maybe we'll be able to compromise one early or something like that, right? Like it, yeah. So you're just randomly choosing random now? Is that how you, you select assets? Yeah, I can't really like make any determinations, right? All I see now are just a bunch of IPs, right? Yep, yep, yep. So just, yeah, just randomly selecting. Okay. Okay, there was segmentation put in place because I can see the access cutoff notification, right? All right, very cool. All right, so yeah, so obviously yeah. a lot less things. Um, Looks like a couple of the assets that you scanned did show up or the remote users turned on their machine. So we could see four laptops. Yeah, there, this one is probably also on the remote user because it didn't disappear when we uh, like uh, segment the network, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Then ne next turn we'll be, we'll be able to see all the firewalls. So we'll just have to really wait one, wait one turn, right? Uh, we can do like quick passwords. Uh, hmm. Maybe we could do like find vulnerabilities, right? Why not find some vulnerabilities? Maybe we'll be able to compromise using them if we need to, right? 
because mm -hmm. right now we'll be using password attacks, but it's a way to prepare for the future. Uh, and we could do evade network detection, right? That will help us evade the uh, uh, IDSs if they are present within the organization. But uh, yeah, it's just a way to use resources so that we aren't just yep. sitting. Right? Hey, you're not going to get a complaint from me about using resources. So with Greg's Wild Ride, you have zero interest in vulnerability discovery, um, exploit research, any of that. This is really just focused on punching through uh, weak passwords and default passwords. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. So we are expecting more firewalls, right? Okay. Uh, wow. We can see all the firewalls right now. Yep. So uh, I'll use the password attack. Uh, maybe I'll enumerate this this one, and we could try to find the public vulnerabilities here. But that's again, if in case none of the uh, in case both the default passwords and the weak password vulnerabilities won't be present, the the generation of vulnerabilities is random, right? You won't have always have the same vulnerabilities on all the firewalls. So there may be a chance the game didn't just generate uh, either of those on a firewall, for example, mm -hmm. right? So we'll be we will need to use standard attacks, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, all right, all right. But we'll try again. Okay, so password attacks aren't guaranteed. Just so everybody knows, there is a chance that you do it and it fails. That doesn't mean that you uh, don't have the passwords. It just means that the the attempt failed, right? Maybe you had a bad yeah. password list. Maybe we were using the Rock U Light versus the Rock U Medium, right? So um, th there is a potential here for successful exploit, uh, successful getting in there. What's up, Jess Bishop? Hey, Just a Bite. Thanks for joining. Exactly. Uh, the password attack will, will always work for the first time. If there is a default password present, mm -hmm. be present, right? Because the default password, you just look up a password and then you put it in and everything works, right? But uh, if there are weak passwords, uh, you might have to try a few, three, few times. So we'll, we'll try at least three times. If the three attempts won't work, we'll try to use normal vulnerabilities, right? Because uh -huh. we have a way to move laterally otherwise. All right. It sounds good. I like it. Yeah. Maybe on the level of big passwords, why not? <laughs> okay, we'll try it again. And maybe let's check what, what vulnerabilities we have here. Um, okay. We could try a format string error vulnerability. Why not? Let's research that. So if we will need to use that, we can use it, right? All right. I like it. So are you it, okay? There okay, we, go. we have gained the access to the firewall. Nice win. Woo! Exactly. All right. So now you're you're making your you're making your way, making your way in the world today. It takes everything you got, Greg. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can use a password attack on the next firewall, right? Because the important assets, the ones that control the PLCs, won't be in the server network. We have to like go into the PCS zone. So the mm -hmm. DMZ firewall is the only one, the, the one that stands between the uh, DMZ zone and the, the PCS zone, which has all the juicy assets we're trying to attack. So we'll use a password attack then. All right. I like it. Here we go. No. Okay. Another firewall. Very cool. Now, Greg, are you interested in, on Greg's Wild Ride, are you interested in getting more hackers, recruiting hackers, or are you just, the train has left the station and it's full, it's full bore. No one's getting back. No yeah, one else is getting on. It's full bore at this point. We, I'll just try to attack. We are really, really close to the X assets. So at this point, uh, we won't have much use of uh, the extra resources, even if we gain them. Okay. Right? All right. Very good. So they, uh, they had their chance, Greg, is what you're saying? They had their chance to get in yeah, with the, with the lead hacking chance. crew? 
Mm, yeah, okay. They had the chance, they didn't take it, so we will right. be going well, off. Well, we're here. All of us yeah. in chat are here. 35 of us. We're part of the yeah. crew. Exactly. Uh, uh, we, uh, I think I'll just research some vulnerabilities uh, that uh, are more likely to happen on uh, certain, on the uh, important assets that we'll be trying to attack. Right? Okay. Because right now I just have like uh, uh, mm, four assets that won't be doing anything. But let's just try to research one so that we'll be able to host scan the next ones, right? Because uh -huh. this will, this, uh, research will take two, two turns, right? Okay. So we would yep. want to lock up most of our assets. Okay. Uh, do you want to say anything, Joe? Yeah, well, I mean, as far as the weak password goes, at what point do you get, is it worth continuing to research it versus having had enough? Um, is, right now, I think the game will try to, like, uh, uh, the, the game, first of all, any research in the game has diminishing returns, right? So that uh -huh. is, like, uh, the, the first first item will feel like the, a third of the bar, but the fifth, fifth, research, fifth time you research something, it will only feel like a, f a few percent, right? Okay, so all right. I would like do three or four attempts, right? Past that point, it, it, it isn't really worth it. You could do like vulnerability research or something of that sort, right? Uh -huh. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, a good point is that we can always take one, take the extra level, even if it's a 1% like difference, because we will be able to unlock the assets the next time around. Uh, uh, you pass it the next time around, and maybe that one percent will make a difference, right? I see. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Let's okay. See what we got. So I have both, I have hot scan from the DMC firewall, so I can see all the assets in both the PCS zone and the DMC zone. Okay. Right. So we expect to see like terminal servers. Uh, like uh, engineering workstations, HMIs, SCADA servers, and that sort of stuff. I'll just host scan to continue. Uh, I'll just port scan the, the assets to try to find them, which okay. is what are they are, what they are, and uh, how we can use them to compromise the network. Sounds perfect. I mean, it sounds like basically Easter egg hunt. You're looking for, looking for some good the goods, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We have a few computer Windows computers and Windows servers, so those could be uh, potentially us that control the PLCs. So we'll port scan them, uh, we'll enumerate them, and we'll port scan uh, some other assets because why not? I like it. Yeah. I mean, it's all about utilizing those resources. I mean, ultimately, you're looking for HMI right now or an engineering workstation, okay. right? We can see two assets that are important. The HMI, right? HMI, yes, that's an a SCADA HMI and the SCADA server, right? Uh, those assets are important because they control the PLCs in one way or another. So we can try password attacking one of them. Maybe there will be a weak password, right? It mm -hmm. isn't that, that late in the game. So that we, uh, it is still likely that uh, normal assets will still have like passwords on them. Uh, so I'll do a weak password attack and we'll try to find vulnerabilities on them. So that uh, if even if there won't be any weak, uh, even if there won't be any weak password vulnerabilities, we can still attempt exploitation via the standard methods, right? Okay, so password attack, find vulnerabilities and service enumeration. Let's continue. All right, I like it. I'm doing a little bit of uh, moderation over here as the adult bots are getting in early on some pre-Thanksgiving mm -hmm. action. Yeah. Okay, so we have command injection and SQL injection. SQL is really effective, so I'll try to research that. And okay, we'll have a SQL injection here. Why not? Uh, we... <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we can try password attacking the other box. Maybe it will have a weak password. Who knows? Okay. Okay. Now, what's your focus of uh, trying to hack into the SCADA PCS box from uh, Greg's Wild Ride perspective? Uh, that this uh, this server controls one of the PLCs, so that way we will be able to damage the ISIS process. 
I see. Okay, very good. PLCs, and this one controls the PLCs. And right now, nothing else we can see, but we could like enumerate all the other assets to try to find something. All right. But as well, we can see that vulnerabilities are present, still present. And uh, maybe we could try exploiting those first, right? So we won't have to spend the extra cost on trying to find the other hosts. Okay, I like it. Uh, another password attack, right? Because we are still researching the still researching the SQL injection. So that okay. will take another turn. And let's end the turn. Okay, right. SQL injection research completed. Uh, didn't work. Uh, I'll try to get another level of SQL injection, just okay. like just to be sure that the attack will work. Okay. And we'll try to password the attack the SCADA server again. Okay. Now, from uh, Greg's Wild Ride perspective, the SCADA server and the engineering Woo! workstation are, are the like same thing, right? Because we cannot control the SCADA server. All right, and hold on, yes. hold on. Look at me, look at me, look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. There you go, Greg, you're the captain now. Yeah, exactly. As you can see, there are 22 turns and we already have the control over a PLC. So we could demonstrate this process, but we need to wait for the research result because right now we don't have enough resources. Okay. Uh, we could like... Hmm, I know we can ex we can install ransomware for fun, maybe some disruptive malware because I like it. Yeah, so Alex, I, I I do agree that SCADA and Engineering Workstation are different assets. I guess my, my question was from a Greg's Wild Ride perspective of damaging the um, ICS process. They both can get you access to it. So I, I guess, you know, Alex is chiming in and chat about um, the SCADA server and the Engineering Workstation. From, from just a uh, perspective, I mean, if you get the SCADA server, can you see more HMIs? Or if you get the engineering workstation, can you see more? Or are they the same from the complexity? I from the... believe that uh, uh, engineering workstation, uh, first of all, there's like two types of proxy control. You can have like a control over the the, the next box that the, the, the other one controls, yep. or you can have proxy visibility. So I like, like for example, the configuration of one of the boxes cont contains data about the, uh, the other box. I think that the engineering workstation will have uh, proxy visibility of the HMI, for example, right? So it will be able to see it, but not uh, attack it. So there might be a very, very small benefit, but overall it, it's negligible, right? Okay. All right. Sounds good. I like it. Well, let's let's go ahead and finish the wild ride. Yeah, the, the train easy. is just like. It's like, you know, out of control. The, the engineer is asleep at the wheel. It's rocking from side to side, up off the rails. Let's bring uh, this one. But we cannot, uh, I'll do something else. I'll, I'll activate ransomware first, just for fun. Uh, all right, all right. You're a maniac, Greg. And damage the ACS process. Let's all right. go. Let's go. Woo! We oh my one. gosh. Boom, roasted. Nicely done, nicely done. Can we see the results? Can we see if you actually ransomware the box correctly too? Yeah. So, I, oh I, my I, God. Skate P so like this this company's having a horrible day. There's like their pump jacks are on fire. Their skate of PCS server's got a ransomware node on it. Yeesh. Actually, you know what? <laughs> yeah, gotta eat that server out here, man. Nicely done, Greg. That is Greg's wild ride. And you can see he went from the internet to the main firewall, to the server firewall, to the DMZ firewall. He did not go through the PCS firewall, but he didn't need to because the SCADA PCS server had firewall rules that allowed its network traffic to go through it and get to the HMI. And this is how you do it, people. Exactly. If all of that would have been prevented if, if if Carl, for example, changed the default passwords or the weak passwords on the firewalls, right? This one had default passwords. This one had default passwords. This one had uh, nothing, but that can also happen. Uh, maybe th there was a weak password, but maybe it was like removed during gameplay. <laughs> uh, this one had the default password and this one had a weak password, right? Yeah, let me get, let me give you Carl. Carl! Also, I really, I have a sounder that I hardly ever get to use, and I wish I had used it right before you hit end turn that time. Finish him. Could have, could have done the old Mortal Kombat finish him. Um, 
So let's go back to the uh, results page where it's the red versus blue. Um, so I just want to give Greg a lot of credit. Uh, resource utilization, 100%. Near and dear to my heart, Greg. I love I love Maxim utilization. You, you see that his social engineering was zero for zero because that's not what Greg's Wild Ride's all about. Getting arrested didn't happen because he was moving so quick. And his manipulation attacks, while only at 50%, were successful enough to destroy um you know destroy everyone so very very well done greg uh, we could do uh, uh, do we have enough time i could show like greg's wild ride from under perspective let's try to uh, yeah we uh, could we could do that we could do that let me ask you this greg could we do greg's wild ride from a different perspective from a speed run perspective as well like mm -hmm. you could just focus on you and i will commentate what you're doing uh not not the, these two methods will like clash with each other but okay. if you really want to do a speed run like we could do the speed run one or we could do uh, the other win condition which would be uh, pnl victory via attacking via weak passwords all the other boxes so all right well, control... let's let's do that then jump in there let's do the uh pnl weak passwords um you just play it as as normal and i will commentate you pick whatever you want and fly and uh maybe we'll have time for a speed run we can get the greg trifecta hopefully you guys played placed your parlays uh greg's one for one if you get your uh trifecta hit you know everybody everybody wins everybody wins all right okay so i'll start start with the standard one standard method yeah, we got some requests here for Greg versus Jerry. I don't think that's going to happen. I might be the uh, 2022 Invitational Tournament champion, but Greg has yeah. probably a thousand more hours in this game than me. So it, it could be an interesting matchup. Me, Greg, you know what? How about uh, me versus you for a holiday match uh, closer to the, to the U.S. Christmas holiday? Maybe. We can do that. Right. Yeah. Let us know in chat if you'd like to see me and Greg go head to head. Maybe we can do it for uh, for some for some charity or something like that. Make it make it a uh, an event of some sort. I don't know. We could use DraftKings. That's right. They got your password. Here, I'm gonna sit down on my little stool here. Lane wants Wild Ride versus Wild Ride. I like it. So Greg is moving um, through. He's enumerating. Can we see your skill tree before you end the turn? Uh, sure. All right, so you can see he's got his default creds and his weak password. All right, you can end the turn. Go for it. Love it. Okay. L love it, love it, love it. I uh, love it. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, we need to remove those two, and now we can use weak passwords. Ah, more weak passwords. Poland has Christmas too. Yes. I Thank you, Clint. Uh, what I meant more was, uh, you know, the holiday, the holiday time to be in, in inclusive yeah. of everybody. We actually do have people, uh, Clint, um, who are tuning in from all countries in the world, including Poland, uh, but just to make it accessible to everybody. I know we've got some people from Kenya. This morning on the threat briefing, we had Nigeria. Uruguay was representing. Worldwide Wednesday, Greg, on the on the Simply Cyber yeah, Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. We'll have to get you in there to have Poland represented. Mm -hmm. All right, so Greg's moving right on through. He's got five five assets available the action log mm. is failing somewhat he's going to password attack a laptop workstation uh why not i'm trying to go for a penal victory so we need to control out of host oh that's true and some wombat from drop varia that's right <laughs> that's right alex goodwin love it all right so uh greg is going to ham oh, on people here working. The hosts here, hmm, not really having much luck here, but we can try to hmm, maybe do a few more password attacks, something along those lines, yeah. Yeah, so we do have uh, people in Simply Cyber's chat and people in ThreatGen's uh, chat. Uh, I can see both of them okay. because of the integration, but because they're not on screen, uh, y'all can't see each other. Oh, the recruit yeah, came off this time. Uh, Nicely done. Okay, You've got sev seven assets now, man. Yeah. Now, so hold on, Greg, real quick. Did you do that on turn? Oh, no, you waited until you got some creds. Okay, go. 
So okay. this is what yeah. I know. Greg's not doing a speed with, with cats, right? So mm -hmm. that we can now continue enumerating the assets. I like it. I do like it, Greg. Um, Greg is not doing a speed run right now, but this is what a speed run looks like. Um, this is like a like you're warming up, right, Greg? This is you like cracking uh, right your knuckles. Now we, are up. we uh, I would like to control a lot of assets because that way, if oh man, the remote user disappeared, but uh, that's okay. Uh, uh, if we control a lot of assets, uh, we'll be able to install ransomware on them and then install disruptive malware, exfiltrate data, and damage their PNL meter to high hell or whatever else, right? I came in Yes, <laughs> that's what Greg's gonna do. You're a wrecking ball, uh, this PNL. Which map did you choose, by the way, Greg? Uh, this is the large. Uh, okay, very good. The large map. Large oil and gas map. Okay, looks like the remote user has changed changed the zone again. So we'll have to hold a host scan. Maybe get another, maybe get the two other remote users, something along those lines. All right, I like it. We're watching advanced gameplay by uh, Greg Pikarski, um, Q&A analyst here at ThreatGen. I want to remind everybody, if you are interested in getting ThreatGen, we are actually running a uh, Black Friday deal all week this week with code threat gen hack friday which will give you 50 percent off anything at threatgen.com courses the platform itself tabletop exercises which we can actually take a look at a, a brief um we can briefly highlight the tabletop exercises after this game with greg a uh, lot of a lot of awesome opportunities and awesome value over at threatgen.com so greg's just moving here he's on turn 21 Okay, we have uh, control over a lot of assets right now, so I'll try to, uh, first of all, maybe let's uh, establish a persistent uh, asset. Uh, because if the remote user logs off again, we will lose control over the that zone, right? All right, all so right, so you really want to get... Password attack the... Yeah, go for it. And let's try to password attack another user. Why not? All right. Okay, that didn't work. Maybe let's again. All right, the, okay. uh, the users are Let's out see. again. New site with hot girls. No, the user is like connected to the zone, so that's okay. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna try to like find. Uh, okay, maybe not port scan. Maybe let's. Yeah, Aaron, I am trying. I'm trying. So we are, we are getting some um, some bot activity in chat right now. I am yeah. working on that. Uh, please continue. So we're at turn twenty four. No love here, really. No love. Absolutely no love. Like <laughs> really hard try time trying to. Like, find something that will... Hmm. Not good. Not good. Not Blue team might have you here. Blue ah, team well, might have you. Data, uh, this, this install disruptive malware, and maybe we'll uh, install ransomware. All right. There's always a good time to install ransomware. Yeah. Okay. Let's port scan a few assets. Ports scan, ports scan, ports scan. Okay, so what did you get that from? From uh, the host scanning on the compromised asset? Yeah. Uh, right. This remote user is constantly moving. The, the uh, blue team hasn't implemented the VPN yet, so it's constantly changing zones. That's the, the, the main problem we're, we're seeing Oh, here. I see. All right, so just like a real, just like a real remote user uh, walking around the plant. Uh, numerators. Mm -hmm. Numerate All this. Right. All right. Sports scan this. Sports scan this. Maybe. Hmm. I'll try to try to actually find vulnerabilities. I think that maybe they might have patched the uh, like uh, uh, passwords by now, right? It's quite late. It's turn thirty by now. So All right. we'll try to use some default some vulnerabilities to like find the 
uh, to be able to access more assets, right? All right, I like it. Makes sense. Going, going for it. Okay, okay. We have some vulnerabilities, but still no loss from the. Okay. Maybe the hmm, stack overflow. Okay, okay. All right. Let's see here. Chat rate. Okay. Four. Yes. Yep. I control over the DMZ firewall. Nice. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Take it. Take it. Let's try. Yeah. The the the, the firewall is already taken, so that's good because we have no uh, persistent pivot within the zone, right? This remote uh -huh. user, even if it disconnects, we still have access to the DMZ firewall. So that's all that matters for me. I like it. Uh, let's try to attack something. Why not? Uh, <laughs> attack overflow. Maybe it will resolve next turn. Why not? Okay, it did resolve, but it didn't really resolve anything. Let's research a few vulnerabilities. We are in the DMZ zone right now, so we should try to scan. We should try to enumerate some of the devices that are left over. Alex Goodwin uh, offering up ransomware in an X risk for six, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it would be definitely like trying to do that uh, manipulation. Then the stack overflow will be done. The stack overflow will be done earlier than that, so we'll be able to use the increased percentage from probability from it, right? I like it. Go for it. Okay. See what we works. get. Mm -hmm. It's really persistent. Maybe we'll All right. try and more than fifty percent stack and overflow maybe, attack. Maybe we'll try ransomware here. Mm. Now those SCADA PCS, okay. right? Oh boy, here we go. Successful attack, nice. All right, you got that engineering workstation. We'll try to get this one. This is the PCS uh, historian, so that's really important as well. Uh, maybe we'll research a bit more. Right? Oh, that's cool. And uh, multiple assets have excess uh, cross-site scripting vulns, so you can um, get get value for doing that research across multiple assets yeah uh, we could like try to uh, try to find the assets that are most important here uh, but okay we have found the the hmi so i'll try to find vulnerabilities on it, the scada hmi so that might be an important asset we can try to use to run somewhere alex goodwin yeah. asks how come you're not spinning up easier to exploit vulns like file inclusion command sql injection etc uh, i think that are slightly easier to exploit but it's not that important i think like overall it will be fine if i do it either way so let's try stack uh, okay what is happening okay yeah uh, we are still researching sql injection and xss okay maybe we'll pass for the tech maybe maybe we'll get lucky greg do you have a youtube channel yeah. We've got a question in chat. Okay. Do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, not really. I don't really have a YouTube channel, but you can, if you want to hang out with me, feel free to join our Discord server. I'm there as Greg. So you, it will be really easy to find me. Yep, Greg is on the Discord server. I put a link in chat. It's not it's not a uh, easy one to you know say, but if you just grab a screenshot of it, type it into a URL. Uh, you'll join the uh, Threat Gen Discord server and be able to play. You can play heads up against Greg if you'd really want to. Um, yeah, exactly. Go cruising for a bruising. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm, uh, somewhere here, maybe. Where now, Greg? What do you think? Where do you think PNL is right now for the um, for the mm. for the blue team? Probably slightly, but they haven't really had any luck with installing ransomware and disruptive malware yet. So mm, I we'll see. try right. to research persistence because I believe that will imp improve chances of uh, installing uh, ransomware successfully. Right? That's mm -hmm. one of the things we want. And we'll try to compromise something else. What do we have here? We have a uh, PCS historian, we have the excess. Let's try that. All right, I like that. That's a high value uh, server, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe we'll try. That's the one you just attacked, right? Again. Yeah, gonna do it again. Okay. I'm trying to like research persistence right now. So 
yeah, I'll just wait a bit more. It's all right. Oh, okay. you, you got it. Nicely more done. Nice. Uh, hmm, maybe it's an okay time to actually start uh, installing ransomware and some um, malware and something like that, right? Uh -huh. um, well, so okay. are you going to uh, install ransomware on that PCI server? Or PCS server, excuse me? Oh, you yeah. have ransomware on it. Has ransomware. The PCS one has, uh, has, has ransomware, so I'll put it here. That's a high-value uh, system right there from a PNL perspective. Yeah, exactly. We'll install this, this optimal over there. We'll try to install a somewhere maybe here. Uh, I'll put somewhere over here. Ben can smell what you're cooking, Greg. Just so you know, okay. it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Okay, we have ransomware on the operator PCS. That's the HMI. Workstation, the another HMI workstation. We have a ransomware here. Woo! Very good. I like it. Let's, let's, uh, boom. Uh -huh. We want, what do we want? This. Yes, there we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll attack this one. Scan server. Why not? It is also valuable. Yep. Oh, definitely. Okay. Didn't work. Okay. Mm. Okay, we have we have disruptive malware here. We could go for ransomware here. Maybe not ransomware or, or that. That way we'll be able to attack the scatter server again. Yeah. Right? You know what? I'll actually start the ransomware right now because we're 30 turn, right? We should okay, start here we go. now. Because then we won't be able to damage the peanut process quickly enough. Uh, like somewhere it. malware, maybe not the malware, but let's try to attack the scatter server again. I like it. I like it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Nicely maybe done. So that's great. Uh, France somewhere. Um, maybe All then aboard. Not. Why not? All aboard the train. It's going to get bumpy. Okay, that didn't work. Oh, they, I think they have resolved the backup or something because the server was, the, the, this one was locked, but then it was, it was unlocked. And we have lost the ransomware. So it probably was restored. Carl oh. restored the backup, but the backup was still compromised. So, yeah. <laughs> Those pesky backups. Those nasty, nasty, uh, dirty backups, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at me, look at me, look at me. Here, pivot Pivot's removed, removed, oh boy. Not good. Uh, they removed, uh, I think it was this, this PC, yes? Didn't you own the SCADA server? Uh, no, not really. I, okay. What what happened around there? We'll, we'll get back to that in the report, game report. But right okay. now we have two, two assets of running around somewhere. Maybe let's try to Install this optimal malware, run somewhere here. Maybe we'll ink exfiltrate data, exfiltrate data. I like it. Okay. Well, so, I mean, you've got some good, you've got some good um, movement on your vi your victim organization here, ah, but it's, it's, like, it's, it's, it's like obvious. They've cleaned, they've cleaned to those two assets, but they've only cleaned them. They haven't removed the ransomware lock, so I'm still damaging the PNL meter. All right, good. Carol on the job, really. <laughs> hey, we can activate ransomware, you can, and you can install it. B BSEC wants you to jump the fence and run in for the HMIs. <laughs> he's definitely going to get tackled in the parking lot. The amount of research he's he's not done on physical uh, security, social engineering. Okay, uh, we have control over that. Terminal server. That's oh boy. Simple. That Ransomware. right there is that's you're the captain Ransomware. now. Excellent data. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Sure. I'm mm -hmm. the captain now. Yeah. Can try to enumerate something? Maybe this. Maybe that. Yeah. Great. Losing some people on stream. You guys have to boogie out of here. I appreciate you spending some of your uh, midday lunch breaks for some of you with us on Threatgen.
Okay, no, but it didn't work. Maybe we'll compromise Is the DMT server or something. Yep. Hmm. Okay, ransomware here. Oh boy. What that? Lovely. This is about to. This is about to go. This is about to go bad for them. Yeah, exactly. They've been calling for that. Uh, <laughs> mm, mm, I wanted to say something, but I forgot what it was. That's all right. Finish him. I'm calling it. Yeah, they're probably like, where their penal is probably way low, right? We have four ransomware assets. We're doing good. Doing good. That's four. Easy. Four That's very good, good assets too. Thanks, TG. Yeah. Enjoy your Thanksgiving as well. Here we go. Got a server. Let's go. Let's ransomware it. Dude, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Malware. Let's go. At this point, the CISO is just lying to the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Everything's fine, boss. Everything is fine. Oh my god. Uh, like if there was ever happen. if there was ever a time for the this is fine emote. There we go. Maybe we'll try to find the vulnerabilities on the EWs, right? We need to have some visibility on what's on them to be able to attack them. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll hmm, maybe we'll get rid of the public vulnerabilities. It's already late in the game, so I doubt we will be able to uh, find Ex any public it, vulnerabilities yeah. on the boxes. But we can try to attack this in exchange for that. Let's uh, go. We'll try maybe hip overflow. Why not? We don't have any resistance, but maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah. At this point, the sis is like, I'm actually going to just uh, head out early yeah. for the Thanksgiving <laughs> break. Uh, I'll see you guys on uh, Monday. Bye. <laughs> Dude, their organization is wrecked. Yeah. Terminal servers, SCADA, engineering workstations. The operators are just like, yeah. And another engineering workstation. X right. data, ransomware. Malware. They, are, they are not feeling good, man. They are not feeling good today. You got to imagine that the SecOps team is like losing their mind. Order pizza. No one's going oh. home. There it is. There it is. Dun, dun, dun. Way to go. Way to go, Greg. Actually, I guess maybe a boom roasted. Boom roasted. That would be more appropriate. Good job, Greg. Well done. Well played. What do we got here? Yeah. If I kind of wanted to like try to use weak password attacks, but we've kind of gotten like uh, really late in there. Maybe the, there wasn't any vulnerabilities on the gate with firewall or something like that. But yeah, it was a still an interesting game, nonetheless. Absolutely. Ben saying that the CISO is like, ah, I'm just going to go ahead and hand in my letter of resignation now. Best wishes to all of you. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Lane H says that the organization didn't meet the minimum height requirements to get on Greg's wild ride. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. I like there it. we go. They have a result from backup. So my, uh, my, oh, done the this research, but maybe this one, right? Operator PCS. Uh -huh. So my, my expectations were correct. They have, but uh, first of all, if the backup is dirty, it can continue to be compromised. So you can try to ransomware them again. Uh, and yeah, and cleaning doesn't remove ransomware. That is also a lesson you have to like remember or something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, you need to replace the asset or restore a backup before the ransomware locks the asset. Pretty good. I want to. Do, do they ask for budget at any point? Uh, let me. Let's see the. Uh, let's see the. Here. Oh, dude! Seven so times they went to the well. Oh my god, that sis is definitely getting fired. I can't believe they went to the well so many times, got paid out so many I guess maybe to maybe to fund that uh the ransomware or or maybe the executive search for his next job or her next job. Mm -hmm. Very nice, Greg. Well, thank you very much for showing us Greg's Wild Ride in two flavors, both vanilla and chocolate. We got the traditional one. Let me do this really quickly. We got the traditional attack from Greg today where he just runs as quickly as he can, popping firewalls, making his way to the HMI and ultimately destroying them. And then the second flavor of the PL loss with just punching different assets in the face, 
locking them up with ransomware, installing disruptive malware, exfilling data all over the place, making it really, really an awful holiday weekend for a CISO somewhere. Greg, yeah. any any final thoughts about Greg's wild ride? Um, it can have a lot of variations. The best way to like learn it and to try the, all the different methods is to experiment. So get on your games, try to play some games, try to use different methods and have fun, most importantly, right? A absolutely, absolutely. Hey, real quick before we jetty out of here, I want to show everybody a quick little teaser video. Threat Gen Red versus Blue can be used for tabletop exercises. And I know this is more of a business uh, use case than it is an individual use case, but most of us work in the field at a business. Uh, so I want to just highlight how tabletop exercises can be implemented in a very effective way using Threat Gen Red versus Blue. Let's take a look. Now, like this very second, if you had a massive cybersecurity incident, how well could you respond? And if you haven't practiced, it's going to be a hot mess. Luckily, tabletop incident response exercises identify gaps in your processes, clarify who is responsible for what activities and what the priority is for action. Tabletop exercises are great in theory, but in practice don't always achieve their goals. They take months to prepare, are communicated with static scenarios and PowerPoint slides, and most participants, including management, tune out the process because it's boring. Let's fix that. I'm excited to share that tabletop exercises don't have to be dreadful. The Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform significantly reduces the time required to plan and host a tabletop exercise, removes the burden of requiring facilitation from senior practitioners, and delivers compelling and entertaining scenarios that will engage your participants throughout. The platform also features active adaptive adversary AI that can be tuned to emulate specific specific threat actors and focus on their TTPs. The dynamic user interface adapts to the current exercise environment, visually communicating and allowing facilitators to focus on stakeholder engagement instead of managing the scenario. Just like you don't get healthy and fit by working out once a year, the speed and frequency you can perform Threat Gen Red vs. Blue tabletop exercises allows you to execute as frequently as you'd like. Setup of the platform takes literally minutes. There is so much more ThreatGen Red vs. Blue can do to increase the effectiveness of your cybersecurity program. Go to ThreatGen.com or follow the link below to find out how you can get started having killer tabletop exercises today. That's right. So you can use it for tabletop exercises. It's a separate module altogether. It's fantastic stuff. And just remind everybody, we are running a Black Friday special all week. Threat Gen Hack Friday is the code to use at checkout if you want 50% off of anything at ThreatGen.com, including the tabletop exercise module or the Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform that we've been playing today. I want to thank you all. Uh, have a wonderful, safe uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, you know, thank you, uh, you know, to all of you for being here. So I give thanks for that. Thank you, Greg, uh, for sharing with us your advanced techniques on how to play red versus blue. And we will see all of you on Wednesday next week, 1130 AM Eastern time for the standard. Let's play threat gen red versus blue. Have a good one, everybody. See you next week.